Good afternoon. We break into your regular scheduled programming to show you how South Carolina is uniting today to honor Senator Clemente Pinckney. Hundreds and hundreds of people are lining up at the State House as we speak to pay their final respects. Well, public viewing is happening right now in the State House Rotunda and we'll be continuing into the evening. Just yesterday, lawmakers moved forward with plans to debate something Pinckney, in fact, fought for years. But today, they'll put that issue on hold to remember their fellow senator and for many, a fellow friend. You can see uh, how so many people uh, walking through the rotunda in this live picture from the State House as we speak now. Hundreds of people wrapped around the State House outside just to get up to that second floor so they can pause and reflect and pray and remember the life of Senator Clementa Pinckney, just 41 years old, killed last week in that massacre at the Charleston Church on Calhoun Street in the Low Country. Uh, just a few hours ago, a horse-drawn caisson uh, carried the body of Senator Pinckney to the State House down Taylor Street. This here is the final portion of that procession down Main Street to the State House where Senator Pinckney's body arrived shortly after noon today. Now, right now, our Tara Pettit is live at the State House as people enter and, as you saw, paying their respects and standing by for that public viewing. Tara, can you set the scene for us? What's the atmosphere there in the State House and at the Rotunda today? Janet, Brian, hundreds, if not thousands of people are both inside the State House and outside the State House to pay their respects to Senator Clementa Pinckney. Hundreds of those people were there outside, as you said, to watch the procession as his casket was pulled by a horse drawn carriage into the State House. Um, it, he did. He was brought from Levy's funeral home to the State House around 1230 today. Um, today, they're having this public viewing from 1 to 5 where anyone can come pay their respects to Senator Pinckney. He was a Democrat of uh, District 45. He lived in Ridge Ridgeland. He was really well known for Medicaid expansion. He was pushing for for people to have expansion that wouldn't be able to afford it otherwise. He grew up with a family who wasn't fortunate enough to be able to afford uh, Medicaid or some kind of health insurance. So he's pushed for other people to be able to afford that. And, and that's something that he'll definitely be remembered for as well as a, a, a bill and an issue called Healthy Bucks to help people there as well. Um, Senator Pinckney, he leaves behind his wife Jen Jennifer and two children. The next two viewings, excuse me, will take place this Thursday. Those will take place at the Emmanuel AME Church where he was a reverend. There will also be a funeral and burial that will be taking place Friday in Charleston. And with these hundreds and thousands of people coming to see him today, pay their respects, it's definitely clear that he was certainly loved and cherished as a public servant. Live at the State House, Tara Pettit, Watch Fox News. Thank, yeah, thank you, you very so much, much Tara. Tara. You know, that, that is why yesterday, uh, so many of his former colleagues put the business of state on right. hold for a short time while they did debate some key issues, including the Confederate flag issue, which will be taken up. Not today. This, right. this is not this the day, not for, the day that. for that. Th this will be taken up likely as early as next week. Sometime this summer they're going to do that. But we wanted to play some of the comments for you from yesterday from, from some of his, his colleagues. Uh, he was known as, to some, the Martin Luther King of our time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pinckney, the youngest black man ever elected to the Senate when he was 27 years old. And of course, last week at the age of 41, he was taken while serving in his other role as pastor of Emmanuel AME Church. Now, a black drape and a single flower still cover Senator Clemente Pinckney's former seat on the Senate floor. And for another day, as we've mentioned, his former colleagues paused several times to remember him. Many of you know that you loved his voice. He used it not for himself, but to speak on behalf of those who had no voice. The families of the victims have set an example for the country in how to deal with tragedy. And yes, in my opinion, this South Carolina Senate, which I love, has set an example Senator Nikki Setzler of Lexington, of course, Senator uh, Gerald Malloy of Darlington, who was involved yesterday in introducing a bill to take up that Confederate flag debate in the wake of this tragedy in Charleston. Now, there are some details about the public viewing. It is going on for several more hours. Uh, we do have a graphic with that information for you. It continues until 5 tonight. All visitors 
who are in line by 5 o'clock will be allowed to pay their final respects and view Reverend Pinckney. Those who arrive after p uh, 5 p.m., though, they will be turned away. And here are the details, Janet, that, that everyone needs to know. Yes, no photoing, no photos, no videos will be allowed inside. Um, do not bring backpacks, electronics, and other metal items with you. Officials are urging you to just leave those things in your car. Water will be provided to those who are out there standing in line. And for those of you looking for parking, there's parking located on Park and Lady Street, the garages there, as well as metered parking on Assembly and Sumter Streets. Now, Senator Pinckney's funeral will happen this Friday in Charleston at the TD Arena. That is on the College of Charleston campus. President Barack Obama is set to deliver the eulogy at Friday's service. We are also getting more funeral information for the other victims in that deadly shooting that happened last week. Services for Sharonda Coleman Singleton will be Thursday at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church in North Charleston. Services for Taiwanza Sanders and Susie Jackson will take place Saturday at Emanuel AME in Charleston. This week, the Charleston City Council unanimously passed a temporary ordinance banning protests or picketing at those funerals. No one is allowed to protest or picket within 30 feet of a church or any building holding a federal a funeral memorial or burial for one hour before and after the service. Of course, we have all of those details on funeral arrangements and everything covering these stories on our website. Yeah, WACH.com is where you want to go throughout the day. Um, we will be back, of course, with you tonight on Watch Fox News at 10 and, and, and give you a full rundown of, of what happened today as South Carolina unites to remember the life and honor the life of Senator and Reverend Clemente Pinckney. We now send you back to your regularly scheduled programming.